Well, g'day, Flatties and Globe Defenders. It's Critical Think from Down Under. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind. Today, we're going to talk about how a $20 kitchen scale crushed the flat earth. And on a road trip early in May 2024, and I thought, this is another opportunity to check the earth is still a globe. <laughs> Now, you never know when the Earth is suddenly going to turn flat, do you? I mean, if a flatty comes up to you and says, you know, the Earth is flat, say, what? I just checked it the other day, it was not flat. Did something happen? Surely we would have felt something if that cataclysmic event occurred that flattened out the Earth. I know that you can go out and Watch the sunrise any day if you want to check, but play along with me on this one, okay? And of course, yes, we have two competing hypotheses. One, the Earth is a rotating spheroid, and two, the Earth is flat. Now, people think the Earth is flat because one, they don't feel it moving, and two, it looks flat to them. So, one of the differences is it's either moving or not moving, and we can actually test this with our $20 kitchen scale. Now there are two different predictions with the globe and flat. The globe will have a downward force that will vary according to the predicted forces acting on a mass. And for the flat earth, in the absence of any science, any real science to determine a relationship, the downward force is deemed constant. If any of you flatties want to disagree with that, just supply me the formula I can use for the prediction. And away we go. So the globe has uh, our predictions. We can calculate the force on a mass by using the equations. Now, I'm not going to go into this because those of you familiar with my channel know I've covered this before. And uh, this is how the forces work on the rotating globe. And... Uh, in the terms of the flat earth they have nothing so we're going to assume that on the flat earth things fall down because of reasons and one kilogram weighs the same everywhere on the flat earth so that's the model that allows us to predict now with the globe model and the flat earth model what should happen if we go out and measure a mass the forces acting on a mass in a downward direction in various locations around the Earth. And the globe prediction is that line there. And those dots represent the sort of thing we would expect for our measurements if the Earth were a globe. And the green dots there, that's, uh, they should be clustered around a, a flat line. So there'll be a little bit of error and, and the dots should be scattered like that for the flat earth. So you've seen me do this experiment before, but in this case, yeah, we'll say the independent variable is latitude. Most of the measurements were close to sea level, so we don't have to worry too much about height there and how high you are off the ground. The dependent variable is the weight. So the weight is a measure of the downward force acting on a mass, and we use an electronic scale for that. Then we take our measurements and check if the prediction, that's flat or globe prediction, matches reality. Which one matches? I want to take this experiment to Antarctica as part of the final experiment. Now the final experiment is to observe whether the sun is up for 24 hours in Antarctica in the summer. Now, there will be other various experiments going on, and I want this to be one of them, and I'll need some support, so I'll link my GoFundMe down there. So a few people have generously donated already. Thanks very much. And uh, if you feel like you want to put something towards it, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks very much. Now, if you're familiar with the measurements I've already done, you know I, I use this scale, the big one over here normally. I take this... $20 scale with me just to check its reading and and it's been fairly unreliable in the past and this is my best instrument but in this case 
I decided I wanted to travel light because I had to fly down to Hobart and uh, only had limited space for luggage and things in the vehicle after we picked up the vehicle. So I thought, oh, I'll just try my $20 scale this time and see how we go. If we're careful how we do the measurements, we should be all right. So the biggest drawback of the $20 scale is that it doesn't have any way of leveling. So you have to pick a level surface the best you can. And I thought if I'd be careful with it, it might be doing all right. So here's the scale. You can buy it on Amazon. It's a digital kitchen scale. Uh, it's a mini pocket jewelry scale, multi-function food scale with backlit LCD display for cooking, baking, coffee, postal parcel, whatever that is, and for completely destroying the flat earth. So it doesn't have to be very expensive. You can get one of those and try this yourself. So here's uh, where we went. We uh, flew down to Hobart. We stayed one night there. Now we had a a camper van on a special relocation deal so where I had to do the weighing at the campground I, I sort of more or less went to the amenities block and found a spot that looked pretty level and flat so we got these spots we stopped there and we uh, got Hobart, Stanley, Lake Centre, Yama and I did a one night free camping on the way up the east coast there so it's impossible to find a flat surface that was also level so it just didn't take a reading up on the part of the New South Wales coast but we got another reading when we got back home doing a lot of driving not much time for holiday snaps but there's one at uh, Stanley in Tasmania wonderful sightseeing spot and uh, here's a sample in this case I've got two slightly different readings and I took the average of those readings when they were different like that so I processed these weights and lo and behold who would have thought the uh, readings follow the rotating spheroid model pretty much perfectly all the dots are clustered around the uh, the prediction there and of course the flat earth way off the mark as you know I've collected quite a few readings over the years and I've amalgamated them all into one graph uh, you see it's pretty plain to see these measurements confirm that the earth is rotating spheroid now there's this big gap to the right it's just very difficult to get to these higher latitudes especially in the southern hemisphere so the trip to antarctica will allow a couple of extra readings one at the camp on an antarctica and one in southern chile so please do support me on this i'd really love to get these readings and uh by hook or by crook i'm i'm determined on getting there so the conclusion is it's a crushing win for the globe and the flat earth is completely destroyed with this experiment and uh, of course running this experiment would never be complete without playing this clip it goes on about the difference in uh, the weight of things at the equator compared to other places in the earth have you actually gone and measured it have yep. you ever done it yep we understand that in the model based on the spin and centrifugals <coughs> centripetal, centripetal whatever forces that that's the result that you can calculate based on did. your model yep. but can has anyone has anyone actually gone and measured this so-called difference has anyone actually measured that a kilogram weighed in the you know somewhere up north is any different to a kilogram yeah. weighed on the equator has anyone actually gone and done that? No, they have not. A kilogram is a kilogram wherever you are on the earth. Oh.